Motion DSP has been supporting the law enforcement industry for over 15 years with their robust suite of video and audio redaction and enhancement software. Forensic enhancement software allows users to quickly process any video file format using patented super resolution algorithms and enhancement filters. Get forensically valid evidence from low quality video in minutes instead of hours. In just three easy steps, import, enhance, and export. Spotlight was built specifically for redaction and was designed to work with video from any camera source. Using the motion DSP algorithms and object tracking technology, Spotlight automates the process of blurring faces and other identifiable information, saving users countless hours compared to the manual frame-by-frame -frame redaction. And I can tell you, it takes forever to blur faces. All right, so here's the free stuff. Motion DSP is offering the Not Squad members a special offer of a free one-week trial and 10% off any annual subscription with code NOD10. That's NOD10. If you'd like to know more about this awesome software that streamlines your workflow, click the link in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. What is going on? Welcome back to the vlog. A couple things before we get started. First things first, welcome back to the channel. Second thing, uh, how police vlogs is gonna work. Well, police vlogs is gonna work. I'm gonna cover two agencies at a time, and those agencies will be interwoven, meaning I might do one with one agency, then a couple with another, and that'll depend on scheduling uh, when I'm available or when the agency's available, and then make sure they, they match. Uh, as the channel insinuates, there's time where I'm on duty so I do this channel on my off-duty time and I'm also a full-time dad a full-time husband as well as a full-time creator so I got a lot of things going on so bear with me uh, with the scheduling so that's how police cars is gonna work don't forget to pick up your Nick off duty merch I'll link it down below and let's get to this vlog all right guys so the Sun is going down it's getting dark and we're gonna be meeting up with officer Lada here at the Hollywood Police Department matter of fact he's coming right now All right, man, I think I'm just gonna change the name of the channel to Hollywood PD Vlog, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, you should, man, you've been here four times already. Yeah, but we've gotten good stuff. Uh, yeah, beautiful stuff. Land, sea, and sand. Yeah, and now, sun going down. Sun going down, we're gonna do midnight patrol, we'll show you what, uh, how we do things out here in Hollywood at night. Ooh, so it is, uh, to, to be clear, it is Friday. It is Friday. So it is a busy, it's a busy, yes. usually the, a busy night for you guys. The weekends are usually the busiest for us, especially on patrol. Uh -huh. And uh, we're gonna show you how it's done here with Charlie Shift and Alpha Shift. Last time I was here, you came up in a side by side, we hilarious. Had little, we had a little ATV. Yeah. Today's a little different. Yeah, a lot different. A lot different. <laughs> There's a brand new 2022 Tahoe that uh, we're starting to uh, integrate into our system here. Nice. You mind if we? It's what we do here on the channel. <laughs> we check out police cars too. I mean, look at the hat. Look at the hat. <laughs> episode of police cars here we go all right really quick this is a 2022 tahoe it's a new fleet uh, vehicle that we have here in hollywood it's got this push bar with these uh, integrated led lights it's red white and blue uh, we also have a skid plate underneath in case we have to go over a curb or anything it doesn't break our engine block moving back i can see it's all leds we got an awesome whaling light package up here and our spotlight right over there moving under the back it's a hatchback it's an suv so we don't have a trunk. So to keep our things safe and secure, we gotta have this coffin right here. It's lockable, it's safe, there's nothing going through this, nothing can penetrate it. All right, but, and then you have another special feature which is inside the car, correct? In yes. In the back, yeah. Yes, special feature here, 
for those officers that are extremely tall, <laughs> it's a half cage. Uh -huh. So what that does, it actually does two things. One, it lets the officer that's really tall be able to extend his legs and be here safer. And also, it doesn't allow the, the suspect to get on his back and kick out the windows. Okay, so if you guys can't see, there's like a, it's really clean, it's a new car. Some plexiglass right there. And then that's why you don't have bars on this side of the window. Yeah, we do have them on the other side. Ah. ah. And also, let's not forget this. All our vehicles here are black and white. Traditional police colors, just how they should all be. Oh. <laughs> that was shots fired, shots fired. <laughs>It's a hot call, code three call. Uh, what's called is a signal 38. It's a domestic. Seven, Comments of the call indicated that a woman Three, six, was uh, in an altercation Three, six, with a man and possibly being battered and she has Three, children like with her. So uh, the sergeant Three, made it a code three call. So we're on our way over there, uh, backing up other officers that are showing up on scene. Looking like a little code three to start the shift. We're going to try something new this vlog where I come in and out with some commentary as to what's going on and a little bit more further explanation uh, as to what we're doing on shift. A lot of times when we're vlogging out there, a lot of stuff is fluid and we might miss something here and there. Here's a chance where I can review some of the footage and then let you guys know and expand a little bit about what we were doing out there. So let me know if you like it down in the comments below. And with that being said, let's get back to this code three. little bit of a hiccup I didn't have the mics on at this point however let me run you down what happened uh, the officers arrived on the scene however both parties were gone they were GOA as we call it at this point you'll call back the complainant to see if they wanted to be contacted or they have further information as to where the parties went you'll attempt to try to find a witness or find somebody so you canvass the area but at this point um, they canvassed the area they couldn't find anything so they're gonna check back into service and continue their shift Check, mic, check, One. yes, mine's working. Uh, Christian, yes, you, you gave a debrief of what happened. I didn't have the mic plugged in. Oh. Rookie mistake. Can, it's all right. Can you uh, tell me what happened real quick? Yes, yes, yes. We came to, a, I guess it's a hotel here on uh, Sterling Road. Um, comments of the call indicated that there was a guy who was possibly having an uh, argument with a female that, that seemed like it was physical. Um, the caller said that the guy was uh, not wearing a shirt, running around, possibly hit or struck the woman. So we came here, code three, we got here. When we got here, everyone was gone. And the gentleman that called 911 said he didn't want to meet us. So we checked the vicinity, we didn't see anything. And uh, we checked with the, the manager. The manager said that he didn't hear anything. So we, uh, we closed out the call and uh, periodically we'll come and check the area again just to make sure. And then another thing is, you know, you can't blame this guy for calling 911. You know, he really did think that someone was in, in need of help, so he was a good Samaritan and called 911. Oh. You know, different people perceive things differently. And now? And now there's three mm -hmm. rules in police work. What is that? Number one is... You don't go hungry. Okay. Number two is you don't get wet. Ah, I was going to say that one. And number three is you go home safe. All right. I like so it. it doesn't seem like it's going to rain today. And definitely I haven't eaten yet. I'm starving, so we're going to grab a bite. All right, let's go. What's up? Oh, police is not bad police. Man, no, man, we ain't bad. The lady was nice. She said we were in jail the last that. time. I just, I just got out of jail Friday. All the yeah. people that... eight and a half months. <laughs> Let me ride around with y'all. I can catch no, the No, you don't want to nah, be in the back of a police car.
We got a call, a battery call, right here off of Johnson Street. Um, the complainant, or the person calling, uh, is across the street, is observing a man and a woman, uh, unknown relation to each other, possibly fighting in the street. So we're heading on over there right now. What's your name? What's going on? I can't hear you, what? Why didn't you want to get in the car? Because it's just, I can't, I'm going through something so much, especially with my mom, and I don't know if you ever feel like you're alone. No, people listen, they don't say nothing, man. They, 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 they Come here. They Look at me. Come over here. I don't know if you ever feel like you were alone. Probably <laughs> I'll stay with him, right? I feel like my mom is against me. I feel like he's against me too. Because I don't know. Like, so if you wanted to leave, why isn't he letting you leave? He wants me to get in the car with him. He just didn't want to. Why? You feel safe with him? No, I feel safe with him and I feel safe with my mom. My mom you rather stay with your mom? No, I'd rather go home. He's going to take me home. Where do you live? My dog is in the car. Okay, but you didn't want to go with him. Because right now I'm going through something. I just... I cursed at my mom, and I'm not feeling good, so... All right. So as Officer Lotto was dealing with the girlfriend, the other officer was retrieving a firearm from the boyfriend. The boyfriend states that he has a concealed weapons permit. However, he didn't have it on him. Now, this video was filmed before July 1st, 2023. In Florida, after that date, you no longer need a concealed weapons permit to carry a firearm. However, this was filmed prior to that, so he definitely needed a concealed weapons permit. So the officer retrieved the firearm to run the serial number to make sure that the gun was legit and not stolen and that the subject did indeed have a concealed weapons permit. We came here, we asked you what happened. You said nothing. We asked her, she said nothing. I asked her, Do you, does she feel safe with you? She said, yes. I said, what happened? And she said, I got an argument with my mom and my boyfriend and me were gonna leave, but before we left, I just didn't wanna leave just yet. That's it. So no one's in trouble. Bro, you didn't even know you had dogs in the car until I told you. So if you gotta wait two more minutes. My head, you know, my head is okay. I'm stressed out, fam. I'm, 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 I'm in the moment right now. Y'all boys in my face, what do you mean? When Bro, you I'm told, like five told, feet away from you. You told me about the dog, I was damn near about to walk away. I respectfully stayed. That's abuse, fam. So what's happening here is the boyfriend wants to go over to his vehicle because the girlfriend said, hey, my dogs are in the car. However, any reasonable officer is not going to let anybody go back to their vehicle or inside of a house because there's a lot of things that can go south. There could be more weapons in the vehicle or the dogs can get loose and then it becomes chaotic. So for this point, until the investigation's over, hey, man, you just got to stay put, as you can hear Officer Lada say. You may, you may be using your authority by just, you know, just by you having the right. But for a damn fact, just by y'all using these dogs' life as a pawn, like you would let them die and just be like, oh, it was your fault, it was your fault, it was your fault. When y'all had the opportunity. Bro, do you understand that you're escalating this whole, you're, you're escalating this whole thing? It's not about me no more. Me, I'm chilling, y'all, I'm vibing. It's about the dog, that's all I said. And I would let you go over there first off, but I got four, five reasons. The dog protected. I don't want the dog to bite you, because then you're okay. to take action after that. So that's why I'm telling you don't go over there. You look How do I know you're not going to open the door so the dog can attack me? Exactly. Why would you? You wouldn't. So let's just not go there. Let's take that out of the equation. That's it. Listen, what did I do wrong? I mean, what am I saying wrong? You're causing a disturbance to the point where people are calling 911 on you. That's what it is. You have no wants, no warrants, and we're letting you go. All right? You're carrying a gun, or you had a gun, and you didn't have your license on you. So yeah, you were doing some things that you weren't supposed to do, but we're not going to take you to jail for it. We're cutting you a break because you're not a bad guy. Oh, okay, but you were doing bad things. Carrying a gun on you without your, your ID on you is a violation. So we're letting you go. We're cutting you a break because you're not a bad guy. We good? We good? Uh, boyfriend and girlfriend arguing outside. Um, about another incident that they had earlier today and when we got on scene um, the, the gentleman was a little uncooperative at first then he realized hey maybe I should be cooperative and he and he did he was cooperative with us he's a little verbal but he was cooperative we were able to get down to to the point of everything and see what's going on there was no crime that actually was committed it's just that he was very upset and he was arguing with his girlfriend the problem was that he did have a weapon on him. Uh, he had a gun. He does have 
a concealed weapons permit, but unfortunately he didn't have it on him. He was at that point he became very cooperative and he gave us his ID. We were able to verify that he does in fact have a concealed weapons permit. We cut him a break. We put the weapon back into his vehicle and uh, everyone went on their way. We did take a report for a uh, domestic disturbance, but like I said, there was no crime that was committed. So we just got another call here over on Sheridan Street and 62 Avenue. Uh, comments of the call indicated that there was a male with no shirt and white pants with a large stick twirling it around like a ninja. So we're going to go over here and make sure everything's okay. And uh, hopefully uh, we find someone. If they need help, we'll help them out. As you can see here, as we roll up on the scene, we encounter a subject with a large stick. I just literally live right here. I, I just walked around. Okay, if I didn't have this stick. Can I please, my son is sticking in my room. Put the stick down. He's literally one years old. I don't down. want to. Okay, I'll put it down. There. Just tell me his name. Now, I live right here. Why do you have to eat money? Because I want to make sure you live there. You don't think you are to eat money. My son is in my room, bro. How am I going to lie? Verify that. What do you want? Do you really want it? Okay, okay. I'm going to take my name. But, but for real, you don't want to really take me away from my son no. at this time. All right, picture this. One o'clock in the morning here. You look outside your window, you see that guy. Are you calling the police? Ask yourself that. Okay, I just get nervous when it's three of y'all, one person, and my son is sleeping in my room, and he's one years old, man. Like y'all care, or whatever. That's my son. Three cops and one person. It gets me nervous, man. I don't know who you guys are. Either. That's it's a stick. It's a bow. Not a stick. It's a bow. And you're wearing a gi. So you know that's a bow. So stop messing with me. Okay. I'm not messing with you, so don't mess with me. I understand. All so right, what's wrong with you wearing a gi and having a You're bow. wearing a gi at 1 o'clock in the morning, twirling a bow, which is a weapon around. So yes, you're going to attract attention. Okay. And yes, we're I here understand. for you. I understand. That would be like Okay. After a record check, it revealed that the subject is on probation for robbery. Now, when you're on probation, let's say you get convicted of a robbery and you get four years. You serve one year and those other three years you're on probation, which is basically you're released on good behavior. You have to be outside doing the right thing. You check in with a probation officer and at any point you violate any terms that you agree to, which is essentially no run-ins with the law, don't get in trouble, check in with your probation officer. If you violate that, you go directly back to jail to finish out the remaining of your sentence. So if you're in prison one year, out the next, and you had two left on probation, you violate, you go back with no questions asked, and you serve out the rest of the time in prison. A lot of times they'll offer the plea, they'll, hey, we're not gonna put you away for four years, but you are gonna do a little bit of time, and the rest you'll be on probation. Violate, and you go back. Can I take it to the house? Yes. I'm not gonna tour it, I'm just gonna take it. Thank you. So we did encounter somebody with a stick. Yes, uh, to clarify, it was a bow. The bow staff. A bow staff. Yeah. So a call came out of a, a male with no shirt, <clears throat> excuse me, with white pants on, uh, with a large stick twirling around in the middle of the street. And uh, there was, there was a, a guy, he was about 5'2", uh, and uh, he had no shirt on. And he had white pants and he was carrying a large stick. Uh, apparently, he's like some kind of karate guy. And he just wanted to, uh, you know, walk around and clear his mind. And he didn't realize that. Make me walking around at 1 o'clock in the morning with a large martial arts weapon in your hand might not be a good idea. Um, we, checked him out, we checked out with him. We talked to him. We made him realize what he was doing was probably not the best thing. We checked him on the computer and he happened to be on probation for armed robbery. 
So probably another reason why you shouldn't be out with a large martial arts weapon in your hand twirling it around. He did live less than a block away. So his story did check out. We let him walk back home and, and go to sleep and hopefully he doesn't do anything like that ever again. All right. So it's later in the shift and we notice somebody just sitting in the middle of the street in one of the neighborhoods. So we circle the block a couple of times, we notice the vehicle doesn't move. And typically what happens is that there'll be a vehicle parked somewhere and there's a group of buddies that are in the car, they exit the vehicle and they go around the neighborhood either pulling handles or they're breaking into vehicles somehow, some way and getting items out of the vehicles. And then you might get eight, nine calls the next day that a crew hit a neighborhood and, and stole a whole bunch of items. So if you see a vehicle late at night parked in the middle of the street and it was dead in the middle of the street, as you can see, um, you should investigate as a police officer just to see, hey, what's going on. I'm gonna run you and make sure that everything's good and kosher, all right? Okay. As far as I can tell, the only thing you did that's a crime is uh, nice your tag right being now. over six months expired. That's actually a misdemeanor crime, all right? So what we're gonna do is if that's the only thing you got going on, I'm gonna cut you a break and I'm just gonna give you a ticket for it. We good? Yes, if there's something else, then you gotta go on from there, all right? You good? I just noticed that you're really nervous and you shouldn't be that nervous just for a tag, right? So as I mentioned, a vehicle might drop off their crew and they'll be in the neighborhood pulling handles while the vehicle's waiting for them to come back. So we scan around the parking lots, notice that there is indeed a vehicle with the trunk open and some items on the ground. So we head over to that area to investigate to see if there's actually somebody hiding and waiting for us to finish the traffic stop so they can jump in the vehicle. And uh, we try to make contact with the owners and let's see how it turns out. So make contact with the owner and she says she left the trunk open with all the items out on the ground. And those items happen to be purses that she was gonna donate. Coincidence? I don't know, in police work sometimes it's a walk like a duck, quacks like a duck, and it ends up being a cow. This, I actually, I think I did. I was moving stuff inside. Okay. I didn't even realize, I'm so sorry. Quick sweep of the parking lot, made contact with the owner, all is clear. Now let's get back to the traffic stop. So where does she live? One of these? Alright. Alright, give me one second, right? I gotta see how much it is. So basically this is what happened. The guy was just chilling right here. Locked out. Well actually he has one light out, one light on. So we come behind him, we run the tag, tag comes out over two years expired. So conduct a traffic stop on him, he's murdered the comes out of the car. And uh, I step out, we're talking and stuff. He goes, Yeah man, I've been trying to fix that for two years, but I haven't been able to talking to him, talking to him, I'm like, bro, what do you do? You're in the middle of Gateway, like, you don't listen to it. You know? It's kind of suspicious. It starts getting nervous, starts getting nervous. He's like, oh, I, I, I'm here to give a, 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 a charger to my girl. I'm like, oh, what's your girl's name? He doesn't want to be like, I don't know. I just met him. I'm like, bro, come on, we both know what you're doing. And he's like, okay, I'm here, I'm here. So he's straight out, like, he said it. He said it, I read him his rights, and he's still answering questions. 
He's never been arrested. No, he's got no history. No history at all, never been arrested. Uh -huh. Right now, we just have a little bit of weed. It's not a big deal. It's a misdemeanor crime. Worst case scenario, he gets a ticket sent on his way. Um, if, we, if we find a lot more, then we'll escalate it from there. So, um, because lately, there, there's been uh, fentanyl that they've been using to lace marijuana. Um, what my partner here did is uh, he tested the marijuana that we that we got off this traffic stop for fentanyl first. It tested negative for the fentanyl, so now he's just going to test uh, test it for a THC cotton. So lots of twists and turns in this traffic stop. At one point, they believe there might be vehicle break-ins. They did some investigation, found out nothing happened in there. You can see they're uncuffing the subject now. That's because they tested narcotics and they didn't find any THC or any fentanyl uh, that it was laced with. So at this point, they just have a misdemeanor for a traffic offense, which they can give a ticket and send the driver on his way. Well, not on his way. Somebody has to come and drive him. But what they're going to do now is just release him. Um, he's going to have to show up on a court date later. But at this point, good investigative work by Officer Lada and his partner. They're going through the process step by step to ensure that if they're going to affect an arrest, that it's going to be a good arrest. And in this case, they didn't have the probable cause for the other charges. So they decided to cut this guy a break and let him go. He ran his li uh, license plates and uh, came back to an expired tag. So we conducted a traffic stop on him. Uh, when we conducted the traffic stop on him, further investigation revealed that there was a smell of uh, marijuana coming from his vehicle. Um, and he, he basically told us, I think I have some weed. So we stepped out of the vehicle. We uh, confiscated what he believed to be marijuana and what we believed to be marijuana. Um, after further testing, it actually revealed that the substance that he had was not marijuana. Um, it was most most possibly it was um, CBD um, currently CBD is legal in all 50 states and another thing we did is test the CBD for fentanyl because what a lot of people are doing right now is they're getting this legal marijuana the CBD and they're lacing it with fentanyl and they're selling it on the streets and a lot of people are getting sick some people are even dying of it. so at the end of the day we confiscated everything. We put it in for uh, in property for destruction because he didn't want to take possession of it either. And we issued him the citations for the expired registration and failure to register a vehicle. And he was sent on his way. a lot is doing here is one officer versus like a hundred vehicles that are in a shopping plaza so you have a couple options one of them being put your lights and sirens on and disperse the crowd let everyone know hey i'm here you stick around well then we're gonna talk one-on-one -on -one and you'll have some legal action against you uh just be advised there's close to a hundred cars here all doing donuts in front of uh city furniture and all of oakland plaza come here tell your boys not yeah. to come back Tell your boys not to come back here, all right? I literally was being nosy, though. All right. I'm, I'm being nosy. Right. Tell your boys not to come back. All right. Yeah, they just dispersed. They uh, cleared the area. Uh, you can show this um, tank. So I was actually the first unit on scene, waiting for other units to show up. I just turned on my lights. Everyone saw my lights, and they just started dispersing. In all reality, there's about 100 cars there, and I'm there by myself. Unless we blocked off all the exits, we aren't really doing much. So in this case, no one's really getting hurt. We just don't want everyone in the parking lot. It's a private parking lot. I'm pretty sure the owner of that parking lot doesn't want those people there. So we just dispersed the crowd. Everyone went home safely. 
and that at the end of the day that's all that really matters that everyone went home safely Call it off for guys the South Carolina running did they win it's about five ten minutes time play South Carolina running in the alleyway and then they were hiding behind the trash can and jumped the fence the description and the subject had knocked them doors supposed to be still there into a black belt with a two rag on and a white t shirt he's the one that was knocking at the door uh, there's several dogs back there if we can bring the dogs inside they said well every time we try to bring the dogs inside yeah, put the dogs inside. The guy tries to get inside or tries to run towards the door. No. No, no he went inside and then he ran, he jumped at the thing. He, he right jumped now? back. Yes. He almost fell and he's running, knocking the door and the garage. Drunk? Drunk? I don't know. He looks high as heavy, but my so. dog, I think he buy it and everything. Oh, I think so. We had to. When I tried to open the door to bring them in, he was like, Yeah, open the door, let me get in. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, bro, we're gonna help you out. Oh, bro, you got big head dogs. All right, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Where's the dog at? Is the dog inside? Where's the dog at? Dog's inside. Who's with you? Did you get bit? Did you get hurt? Yeah, we're trying to get the key watch. Somebody's going to shoot him when he jumped in. Somebody wants to shoot him. Oh yeah, look, there's blood all over here, the fence and everything. Lock the door, man. Don't touch the... The doors are locked, right? Three vehicles off the road, man. Hey, you know what? Are you alone? Yeah. Why don't you get up and walk out here, dude? Yeah, come on. Let's get off this guy's property. Let's go. Go up front. Come on. Why are you bleeding? What? Go, you got bit. You go. got shot or you got bit? Go got bit by a dog in the hand. Like, no, I think I got bit. All right, go, come on, keep walking. Sit down, Nate. Yeah. Sit down before you fall down. All of this guy's Sit down before you fall down. No, no. Good rescue. All the way down your butt. No, no, no. Keep your hands where I can see them. Okay, so you guys are going to kill me? No, 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 no one's going to kill you, bro. You're fine. We're here to help you. You got some cuts on your arms. What else you have on here, bro? That's it. You guys not working I'm telling you. you. guys not working that way now. That's behind you, Mike. This way. This, this way. Stop moving. Stop fucking that way. Stop Stop moving, moving bro. Right. Roll over roll over, I wanna check your back pockets. Alright. Hey, why are you why are you jumping fences into people's He's houses? Trying to bro? keep from getting killed. Not keep from getting killed? Why? Kill what happened? You. I don't know. Someone's trying to kill you? Yeah. Well, Who's trying know. to kill you? I don't know. You don't know? I have no idea. Alright. Well How we call rescue for you guys. You got a couple lacerations on you, brother. Okay. So a pretty intense situation all around. You have the homeowners with somebody running around their backyard, the police approaching this guy who seems to be mentally unstable, and then the actual uh, subject who is mentally unstable and believes someone's killing him. The homeowners decide that they don't want to press any criminal charges, leave it up to the police to decide what they're going to do with the subject who seems to be mentally unstable, maybe uh, on some kind of narcotics and high. So they call fire rescue to come check him out. Then he's going to be transported by fire rescue for medical evaluation. Citizen uh, called 911, said, hey man, I need the police. Some guy just jumped into my backyard at four o'clock in the morning uh, and my dogs are going crazy. Uh, at first, we don't really think it's it's much, but you know, we come and <laughs> at the end of the day, there really was a guy in his backyard. Um, it was a homeless guy. It seems like he was on something possibly the the residents of the house didn't really want to press charges they just wanted the guy to leave we can't just do nothing um he had a couple of lacerations on his arms and his legs seems as as if he got those lacerations when he jumped over the fence to get into the backyard um we called fire rescue because the lacerations were they were a little deep um and they actually you know they 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 transported him to the hospital they're probably going to put him on what's called the marchman act um, that's when you uh, get put on a on a hold because you're under the influence of uh, a narcotic or alcohol, um, which seems that that he's definitely on something. What was his story? He said that he was running from someone and that someone was chasing him and he was scared for his life. All right. 
So that's why he jumped into someone's backyard. And even even when you were uh, asking him questions, he was still saying, hey, over there, the guy's over there, look over there. Yeah, it seems like he was hallucinating or something. Because yeah. we went over to where he was saying there's nothing there. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing there. He was He's clearly hallucinating. His eyes were just gazed into nothingness. All right, let's just walk up because the, the camera's on. All right, guys, we're telling ghost stories, and it's the end of the night. There's this weird light on us here. but I that feel like I'm on a this. disco. Waka, 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 Eric. Hey, you can tell that it's really late at night. Because <laughs> we're acting like fools. All right, guys, end of the night. Uh, late, it's early in the morning, late in the shift, whatever you want to call it. It's 4.30 in the morning, and we're ending it. Thanks again. Hold on, let me go this hand, because you got to sh always shake with your right hands. Shake with your right hand when you're gonna shake hands, okay? If I didn't teach you anything on <laughs> this channel, it's late at night, guys. I'm giving handshake tips. Make sure you guys put all your questions down in the comments because we're gonna come back with that emergency response mini podcast series that I'm gonna be doing in my car. And uh, Officer Lada is gonna be joining us answering your guys' questions. So make sure you put it in. Uh, do you know how to sign off? I hope you do. Because... Right, well, it's the fourth time. I better know. <laughs> if I don't know, I don't deserve it. All right, guys. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you. <laughs> all right. Not Squad represent! <laughs> Try to catch me howling at the moon! I'm like, did I take the wrong turn somewhere? Wait, I, I just vlogged with you guys. You what? I just vlogged with Mikasuki. And now I'm with Hollywood. Oh and, yeah, you're Nick. Yeah, look, I it's, know, sir. it's Mikasuki in Hollywood. It's like multiverse. There you go. <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> I live in Hollywood and I work in Mikasuki. Oh, nice. What can you do? All What's right, up, bro? I'll be with you guys soon, next week. All right, sir. All right, Sarge. All right, see you later, Sarge. Take it easy. <laughs>